Let's talk about the stranded passengers, shall we? That story is gaining more momentum, not less, really, as the days go on. Many, many have spent the night on airport floors across Europe as the fallout from the air traffic meltdown continues. This morning, the focus of the newspapers um, is on compensation, with families being left out of pocket and the huge questions over whether they're actually entitled to any of that money back. Well... Consumer editor Claire Barrett is all over this. Thank goodness you're in today. I think you were due to be in anyway. <laughs> I was. But this is, I mean, this has landed right on, on what you care about most, yes. which is consumer rights. There is an enormous amount. First of all, the kinds of m amounts that people are mm. forking out is going into the thousands, isn't it? New flights, hotels, all of that sort of stuff. But it's not the airline's fault that this yes, has happened. That's so true. massive questions, who's going to compensate well, if anybody the airlines have a duty of care to passengers now this is an extraordinary circumstance this phrase that's being bandied about they couldn't have predicted that this fall over in the national air traffic control system would happen but nevertheless the airlines have a duty of care to deal with passengers in the aftermath the problem is is that the delays have been so long because this has happened at a time of peak travel when there's very little slack in the system so you've got situations where even though they're obliged to book you onto the next flight home, that might be in several days' time um, in some cases. They're also obliged to pick up the cost of things like overnight hotel accommodation if you can't get a flight um, home immediately, and the cost of travelling to and from the airport, the cost of food. Some airlines are giving out food vouchers, but there are a lot of reports in the papers today that passengers are saying they feel abandoned by the airlines. Theoretically, this is what they're entitled to, but they're not receiving it, and many feel they've got no option around but to take options into their own hands and to book um, a hotel or to rebook a stay for their family so they don't have to sleep on the floor in the airport in the hope that afterwards they'll be able to get the airline to yes. refund them. And this is what I worry about now. We're going to have a situation, people are facing a long wait to get home, but are they going to face then an even longer wait to get back the money that should be due to them? They're not entitled to any additional compensation for the delays because Just this is something that was out. Just expenses returned. But exactly. Mm. The expenses that you've had to incur, I think we have to keep a really close eye on this to make sure that people who are left out of pocket by, yes, an unprecedented situation, but nevertheless, this is something families have spent so much money saving up for a holiday and to then have to spend so much money again in order to just get home it seems incredibly unfair. So what should you do? OK, so the airlines are saying keep in touch with them on yes, their apps. You know, many course. people are going, hang on a minute, the apps <laughs> yeah. don't update. We ring, yes. the, we ring the airline and it rings off. And, and they, they've been very criticised for not having people um, on the ground in the airports. But nevertheless, they're saying don't go to the airport until you've looked at the app, see what your flight is in, keep all of your receipts because yeah. you will need those um, to, to make a reclaim and check your travel insurance. Now, some policies will cover um, travel disruption. It's not something that's standard. But if you've got a good policy, it's possible that you could make a claim through your insurer. Right. And also, be aware of scams. We've covered several yeah. times on this show when things go wrong with airlines, people take to social media to try and get into contact with somebody and scammers can prey on you. So make sure you are talking to your travel provider directly. Under but stress, horrific, it's horrific really situation. difficult, isn't it, yeah. in all those circumstances to keep a clear head. But I suppose keep a clear head and stay calm is probably also the key. Right, OK, I'm sure we'll be talking about this again at some point, won't oh, we? Yes. Um, should we talk about student bank accounts? Because there's some really interesting... Um, ones out there if you're about to head to uni. Yeah, so the three things to look at are, number one, the size of the interest-free overdraft. Now, borrowing is a fact of life um, for, for students, mm. but the amount of fee-free cash, you've got to pay it back. It's not free money, but that is going to be a really big deciding factor when you're comparing different accounts. So the top accounts for overdrafts are NatWest. They'll offer you a fee-free overdraft of up to £3,250 in your third year. Nationwide and HSBC both offer up to £3,000. Now, just to put that into context, that's around double the level that some other banks are offering. So well worth bearing in mind. Mm. All three of those banks also offer £100 cash for opening an account if you meet certain criteria. And then there are other perks that might tempt you. So Santander, they offer the four-year young person's rail card, which it's is worth amazing, around £100, think, pounds, yeah, so that could be great. worth having. HSBC, interestingly, offer a subscription to a meditation app as well, which is which worth I think is a really good idea. Pounds, I do it think could it's be. a good idea. You know, novel way of 
procrastinating yeah. <laughs> before you yeah. find and keeping wrestling. yourself, you know, anxiety free. It's and NatWest offers a, a four-year taste card membership where you can get money off restaurant meals. So oh, very lots good. Of, yeah, lots, lots of freebies of there. You can take out more than one, can't you? I, I think you have to guarantee to pay your student loan into one. Right. So you might find... So you can't go around to... and go, I'll have the rail card, yeah. I'll have the meditation app and I'll have the free restaurants. Yeah, I you think you, you, have to, you have to... Right, OK, yeah. <laughs> um, should we talk about um, energy bills? Of course, um, the nights feel like they're drawing and it was pretty cold when I got out of the house this morning. I thought, oh, God, here we go, you know, start thinking about putting the heating on at some point. Sure. Um, but is there good news? There is good news. Last Friday, we saw the price of the energy cap fall. So, um, so it doesn't cap your bills, it caps the amount of unit prices that you'll pay important to remember that but the typical dual fuel household from the first of october will now pay 1923 pounds a year for their power it's still a lot of money but it's the best um, rate that we've had for around 18 months so lots of people are thinking should we now look into fixing um, our, yes. our, our energy bills because although it is coming down you're not going to get that £400 worth of help from the government that everybody got mm. last year mm. although people on benefits and pensioners will get some extra money so the best thing to do is check with your existing supplier there are deals around that are below the level of the price cap if you lock in for 12 months but they'll only offer them to existing suppliers some suppliers to mention who are doing that Oxpus, Sainsbury's Energy, Eon Next, EDF, Shell oh. Energy and British Gas of course if you fix for a year and then the price cap falls further, then you could, could end up overpaying. But I think for a lot of people around the head into you, winter, you it's a certainty. Up, and also the weather might get better by spring next year. So then are you still paying what you were paying in the winter? Sure. In well, the I think summer. the best thing you can do, look on your supplier's website, yeah. see what they offer so you can make an informed decision. And yes. If you feel you need the certainty you just some of knowing control. what you'll pay... Exactly. I think that will be... Um, food prices. Yeah, so some good news as well um, on, on the price of food. The latest inflation data so, shows that the rate of inflation on fresh food has fallen this month. Things like meat, potatoes, also cooking oil. The prices are still more expensive than they were a year ago, but the rate at which the prices are increasing are slowing down. So and that's the right direction that, that we right all need direction. anyway, yeah. All right, fantastic stuff, Clara. I'm sure the, uh, the airline issue will be one that rumbles on... Oh, may yes. need your help once again uh, when people get home and start needing to fill out those forms, uh, which can be a nightmare, can't they? Thank you so much, Claire.